Hey and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here. This is our fifth video on sequences and series in Core 1 Maths. And in this video I'm going to talk about the nth term of an arithmetic sequence or series. I've already shown you the formula in video 4, but in this video I want to show you where the formula comes from so you understand it. And also I want to show you how to use the formula in the style of exam questions that tend to come up for you. Right, here we go. First thing I'd like you to do is actually do something. Do you remember how to work out the nth term of an arithmetic sequence or series? Now just to be clear, I'm not asking you in the series case, let's say the sum to n terms, I just want the formula that identifies the nth term, the number that is in the nth position. Do you remember from video four? If so, try and write it down. I certainly remember it because I have practiced remembering it. It is un, the nth term, is equal to a, the first term, plus n subtract 1 multiplied by d, which is the common difference. So just to make sure we know what each uh, thing stands for, un, remember that stood for the nth term, a stood for the first term, and d stood for what we call the common difference, what the sequence or series was going up or down in each time. Now I just want to take a second to explain to you where this formula, uh, how this formula arises if you don't see where it arises. And I'll do it via an example. Suppose we had the sequence, let's do it in sequence form. Let's say we had, let's say 7, let's do the one we did before, 7, 11, 15, I think was it this one, something like this, 19. Okay, and in series form, it would be the exact same terms, but it would just be 7 plus 11 plus 15 plus 19. And I should have written plus dot dot dot, and I should have written comma dot 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 there. Okay, that's a sequence form, that's a series form. Let's think about how uh, this works. In these cases, I just want to point out to you what A is. A clearly is the first term, which is 7 for both the sequence and the series. And D is clearly what they're going up in, and they're going up in 4. Okay, so A is 7 and D is equal to 4. Now I'd just like to think how we can generate this sequence or this series. And this is how we do it. I'm going to do it in a blue coloured pen. To get the first one, someone has to just tell you what the first one is, I'm afraid. So someone just has to tell you the first one is 7. How do you get 11, the next one, in either the sequence or the series? Well, you have the first one, 7, and you add 4, because you add 4 each time, right? So you add uh, 4. How do you get the next one? Well, you do 7, add 4 once, add 4 twice, i.e. add 2 lots of 4. How do you get the fourth one? Well, you start with 7, and you add 1 lot of 4, 2 lot of 4s, 3 lots of 4s. So you add 3 lots of 4s, 3 multiplied by 4, and so on. Okay, and that's how you get any of the terms of this sequence or this series. Let's try and generalize using A and D. Forget, imagine we don't know A and D. Someone has to give you the first term. So the first term is always A. Now, someone, uh, you have A and you add one lot of common difference, D, to get the second term. To get the third term, you have A, and you add two lots of the common difference. And to get the next one, you have A, and you add three lots of the common difference. Okay, so let's think about this just uh, again. This is the first, this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term. The question to you is, what will be the nth term? Hopefully you can see we always have an A. We have an A there in the first term, an A in the second, an A in the third, and an A in the fourth. So in the nth term, surely we will have an A. We also have Ds getting added. Well, we have no D here, to be fair. We have one D here, two Ds here, three Ds here. I'm sure in the nth term, we will have a D. But the question is, how many? Well, here we had no Ds, which is one less than the first term. Here we had 1D, so in the, second, in the first term we had no Ds, the second term we had 1D, 
the third term we had two d's, the fourth term we had three d's, the fifth term we're going to have four d's. If we did the fifth term, it would be quite easy, it would be a plus 4d. The nth term we have a plus 1, n minus 1 d's. a plus 1 less than this number, lots of d. And that's where the formula for the nth term comes from. It's just the pattern, the way things are going up. You start at a and you add a d. Uh, it just so happens for the fifth term you add four d's, the sixth term you add five d's, for the nth term you'll add n subtract one d's. And that is where this formula comes from. Now you're not going to be asked to derive this formula in the exam, but I think it's really good for you to be able to see where it comes from. Even if you're struggling seeing this, if this bit for you is a bit over your head, as long as you've committed the formula to memory, you understand what the N means, the A means, and the D means, you can answer any of the questions in the exam for this. And I'm going to show you two of the styles of questions that tend to come up uh, in the following two slides. Right, let's have a go at doing these. Here's example one. It says, find a part one, the first term, or sorry, the 20th term, and it says part two, the 50th term of this particular series. 4, 7, 10, 13, uh, it's a series, it's, it's being added. Now they're not asking for the sum there, just be careful, like I showed you in video 4, I showed you the, the sum to n. They're just asking for what the 50th term is. Okay, first thing you always do with these is you state your a and state your d. Our a is clearly what? 4, I hear you say. And our common difference d is clearly what? Well, it's going up in 3, so it's positive 3. And our formula, un, is equal to a plus n subtract 1d, isn't it? So in this particular case, for part 1, um, un is equal to a, which is 4, plus n subtract 1 times d. Now, n subtract 1 multiplied by 3, the way a mathematician really writes that, they write the 3 in front of the bracket there. So we would rewrite this as un is equal to 4 plus n take away 1, sorry, 3 multiplied by n take away 1. Now the question is asked us for u20, so let's go ahead and do u20. u20 would be equal to 4, n is 20 here obviously, plus 3 multiplied by 19. 3 multiplied by 19 is 57, 4 add 57 is 61. So u20 would be 4 add 57, u20 would clearly be equal to 61. Underline your answer for the examiner, keep all your equals in the line. Okay, let's do part two. They want the 50th term. As always, write un out. un is equal to uh, 4 plus 3n subtract 1. That's our formula for un with our a and our d written in. And they want u50, so u50 here is going to be 4 plus 3 multiplied by 50 take away 1, which is 49. So what's u50 going to be? Well, 3 multiplied by uh, 49 is equal to uh, 147. So this would be 4 plus 147, and u50 would clearly therefore be 151. Underline your answer. We have done part 1 and part 2 of a very common exam style question. Right, let's move on to example two. Example two here is very similar. They're asking us to, to work out the 20th term and the 50th, uh, 50th term of this series. But you'll notice here we've got a different series and in particular it's going down. So let's state our A. Our A is clearly 100. Our D well, it's going down in 7, so our d must be negative 7. And let's therefore try and write our nth term formula. un is equal to a plus n subtract 1d. Always write your formula down, it helps you learn it. And let's substitute our a and our d in. And remember the d will be written in front of the brackets. So un would be 100. I'll write it out in two goes just in case there's any confusion. n subtract 1 multiplied by negative 7. I'm going to write that negative 7 there, and it's going to look like this. un is 100. It's just going to be a takeaway, 7, n, takeaway 1, like that. That's my nth term. 
So let's do part i. They want the 20th, they want n is 20, and they want us to work out u20. u20, therefore, is going to be 100, subtract 7, multiplied by 20 take away 1, which is 19. 7 multiplied by 20 is 140, so 7 multiplied by 19 must be 133, so u20 must be 100, subtract 133, u20 therefore must be equal to negative 33. And that's part 2 done. Let's do part, uh, sorry, part 1 done. Let's do part 2 up here. They want the 50th term, so we're going to state n is 50. So they want us to work out u50, which is going to be equal to 100 subtract 7 multiplied by 50 take away 1 which is 49. Now 7 multiplied by 50 is 350 so 7 multiplied by 49 must be 343 so u50 must equal 100 subtract 343 therefore u50 must be equal to negative 243. That's my answer for u50. This here is my answer for the 20th term u20 and we've done another similar example, but this time when the common difference is a negative number. OK, so we've done that question now. Let's have a go at our third and final example for this video. It says we have an arithmetic series, so 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, all the way up to 805, and they're all added together. It asks us to find the number of terms in the sequence, i.e. it's asking us to find n, and which term of the sequence would be 129. So which un would give me the, uh, the term of the sequence 129? Right, as always, part a. Let's state what we know. We know that a is equal to, yes, that's right, 5. Um, D, our common difference, is equal to, it's going up in fours, so positive four. And let's state our um, formula, un. So un is always a plus n subtract 1d. So in this case, un is equal to a, which is five, remember we bring the d in front, plus four n take away one. Now, in this particular sequence, that's the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term, that's the fourth term, that's the fifth term. This here, we can call this the nth term. And we could find out what n would be the 805th term, and that will tell us how many terms in this sequence, okay, or in this series in particular. So, let's have a go at setting un is equal to 805, and finding the n that makes that happen. So, we're going to solve 805 is equal to this. So let's say 805, or actually let's write it this way around. Let's solve, let's tell the examiner what we're doing. Solve 5 plus 4 n subtract 1 is equal to 805, like that. Let's multiply out the brackets, so 5 plus, multiply out the brackets here, 4 n take away 4 is equal to 805. Let's combine like terms. So we've got a 5 and a take away 4 here, which is 1. So we could write this as 4n plus 1 is equal to 805. And to solve it, we take away 1 from both sides. So 4n must be equal to 804. And divide both sides by 4 to get that n must be 804 divided by 4, which is 201. Therefore, there are 201 terms. Therefore, 201 terms. And we've done part A. Now let's do part B. Part B is saying, well, which term, which n, gives me the answer 129? So in this case, we're solving un is equal to 129. So let's solve 5 plus 4n subtract 1 is equal to 129. And it's the exact same game. Multiply out and find your n. So 5 plus 4n subtract 4 equals 129. 4n plus 1 equals 129. Div take away 1. 4n equals 128. And divide both sides by 4. And I would get myself that n, in this case, is 32. So which term of the sequence would be 129? 
therefore we state therefore, that's the sign for therefore, the 32nd term would equal, always state your final answer, answer the question, would equal 129. And we're done. So I hope you found this video useful in a basic use of the nth term of an arithmetic sequence or series. I'm going to do the next video on a slightly harder example that comes up a lot in the exams using this same formula. So tune in for the next video with a slightly more complicated example. Thanks those for watching.